Monica Bush, uh, thank you so much. I want to thank Ms. Wilder, the counselor there at, at Excel, because she has um, every year brought Excel out. And she thought it was very important that they participate because our young people are impacted on violence so much. So if you all could just give them a hand. So each year we try to have someone that has been um, directly impacted by crime each year to speak. And so um, this year we're going to have a grandmother to speak um, that's raising her grandchildren. And um, I want to welcome up Ms. Sharon Carter. Jackson. She was killed January the 2nd of 2018. And I have four grandchildren, two sets of twins, two grandbabies that I'm raising. Uh, they're now ages 12 and 15. And it has impacted us tremendously. And uh, I'm 58 years old and doing my best to raise my grandkids. Health issues are starting to come about, but grace of the Lord, he's keeping me. He's hoping. And I just thank God for this Stacey. I thank God for this and everyone who all. And it's amazing and a beautiful thing that this and everyone came out. Because we're all being impacted. And we're definitely here to encourage, equip, and elevate each and every one of you all. So I just want to thank each and every one of you for inviting me out. Y'all have a blessed day. All right. Well, thank you again, Ms. Carter, for sharing your experience. We're so sorry that you're going through this, and we just want to know that want you to know that we're here to help in any way that we can. Um, and same to everyone else who is a victim out here. At this time, we're going to ask that our chief, Chief Paul Pine, come forward and say a few words. Okay. Well, listen, let me first and foremost say thank you to everybody that's come out here today. But, uh, you know, we're here, one, for several reasons. You know, Mobile Police Department wants to give a platform to our victims. We can talk all we want, but it's the victim's voice that should be elevated first about the violence in our community. And that thing it cannot be understated. But as I look here, these are the folks here, unfortunately, that have been affected by gun violence. In our community that's never accepted. But I also want you to look around at the men and women in blue who are standing here today because they're affected by it. Because they get to see your loved ones in the most undesirable condition. And it lives within and it haunts them as they live out their career, as they live out their life. And so this brings awareness, is to educate, is to elevate our victims. The only way that we can truly stamp out crime, especially violent crime, is through love. But the community has to part with the police department. We're changing things. And I told someone earlier, everybody wants a seat at the proverbial table, but nobody's willing to change the mindset and the things that we do and how we go about solving problems. We want to continue to do the same things over and over again. I would ask you or other parents, other grandparents in our community, to encourage them to come forward, to encourage them to work with the police. We can change it, but it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna allow all levels to get involved. I want to first acknowledge too, seen uh, Mr. Sean Costello from the U.S. Attorney's Office. 
the DA's office in their group. The director of the team is here. Mr. Robert Clopton with the NAACP is here. I hope I didn't miss anybody else, but I think that's a testament that we all want change. And this venue has grown bigger and bigger every single year. My commitment to you, my commitment to this community as the police chief, is that we're going to stomp out by crime. But I cannot do it without the community and your support. What I'm going to ask right now, if you don't mind, and these gentlemen have been put on the spot, I think it's appropriate. Even Mr. Cal Callahan is here. And I think that's important that he's here to see us. But I'm going to ask two people to come up because I think it's fitting, Brandy, if that's okay, just a few minutes of their time. Director Batiste, if you will, step up. He didn't know I was going to call him up here, but he's been a part of this community, and he's been challenges. He's been faced with the same challenges I have. And I want Mr. Robert Clopton with the NAACP to step up as well because he's an advocate and a liaison with the community and the police. And I think it's important for both of these young men step up and speak as well. Correct? Chief, thank you for the uh, opportunity. For everybody that's assembled here today to commemorate the loss of their loved ones, I am truly grateful for the opportunity to be a part of this event. It does my heart good to see the young people, and particularly the young people from Cell Academy, and the things that they, they, they put out there, the, the messages that they're sending to the community uh, really means a lot uh, to, to us in law enforcement. And, and I've said this a million times, you know, the men and women of the Mobile Police Department, they feel the pain of this community. They take it home with them. They are vested in this community. They don't just work here in the city of Mobile. They live here. They raise their families here. Some of them are coaches. Some of them are deacons in their church. Some of them are, are, are assisting in the school system beyond what they do when they put that uniform on. And so when our community is hurting, when your community is hurting, they're hurting. And so we're grateful for the opportunity to show you that we care, we haven't forgot about your loved ones, and we would just ask that you just continue to support our chief and support the Mobile Police Department and support this community in the way that you've done it because we can't solve crime without your help. And our overwhelming goal is not to solve crime, but to prevent crime. That's what we're striving for, not to solve them, but to prevent them. So, Chief, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Chief. I want to thank everyone in advance. I want to thank the Fixing Service, Services Unit, the Mobile Police Department, for folks that allowing the community to just say we're sorry and we're with you, we support you, your endeavors. One of the things we do with the NACP is we follow up immediately on some, some of the atrocities or loss of life, lack of better words, that perpetrated upon families. But our heart goes out to each and every one of you that's represented, each and every one of you that have been touched. Then again, our hearts also goes out to everyone who will be touched later <coughs> on. However, within AACP, we have a mission, and it is to ensure the political, social, and educational uh, aspect and economic opportunities for all people. But in order to do that, we have to have a cease to gun battle. We have gun violence. There's no way we can fulfill our mission. Our mission is to community, help the communities, help everyone within the community. But I urge and encourage each and every one of you. But first, let me say thank you to everyone that's here in support of these families. And let's give them a round of applause, please. one thing. I want to thank everyone who's involved with this program today. But please, especially the young people, keep this in your mind. Keep this one thing in your mind. Do nothing of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility put others before you. Then we will see how much better this world can be. Thank you.
we want to thank everyone that came out to speak this morning. Um, and I just want to speak for a couple of moments in reference to an officer's perspective. Um, when you heard, we heard, we have to come out and work these cases and we have to put our feelings to the side. But please know that these officers that stand behind you, they are here to get justice for you. They care. We have to put those feelings down to make sure that these families